Welcome to Unit 2, Forces. Our first lesson in Unit 2 is going to be Fundamental Forces. So what's today's goal? I want you to be able to identify your name, Applied Forces, and I want you to be able to draw appropriate free body diagrams. And this is by, by far the most important thing uh, for this unit, is being able to draw FBDs, free body diagrams. So important, you need it for the Grade 12 course as well. So this is where that focus is. So starting off, we talk about uh, four fundamental forces that exist. Um, we have gravity, so gravitational force. We have strong nuclear, we have weak nuclear, and we have electromagnetic. Okay, so the gravitational, this is something we're going to talk about in the 3U course. And for sure, we're going to add in the 4U as well. So that's a major focus um, in those two courses is the gravitational force. Strong nuclear, weak nuclear, um, they are in the 4U course a little bit, in the 3U course. Uh, my focus is more on the traditional, so we're not going to talk about this uh, too much. If you're going into a field of nuclear science, you're going into nuclear engineering, um, you, you'll have the background and forces necessary that picking this stuff up isn't too bad. And finally, electromagnetic force. We talk about that mainly in the 4U course, the actual calculations. In the 3U course, we talk about the theory behind it, but we don't actually do any calculations in this particular course. So what is force? What is force? Well, the definition is quite simple, or I keep it simple anyway. The definition is any push or pull. So if you experience a push or you experience a pull, you are under the influence of a force. The symbol for force, same, um, we use capital F and it is a vector because we're talking about um, direction. We need to know in what direction the force is being applied. And the units for force are N, and that stands for Newtons, the person that gentleman that coined the term and keep in mind I want you to remember and we're going to talk about this a little bit later on but a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared so that's what the, a newton is calculated as how many kilograms kilogram meters per second squared is being involved here types of forces there are several types of forces this is usually a class discussion um, but some of the more common ones will be friction Okay. Um, force due to gravity. And then there'll be um, engine force. And so on and so forth. So I can go on for a while here. Okay, and we'll just put etc. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different ones. Friction, force due to gravity, and some type of applied force or engine force will be our more common ones. So free body diagrams. I said that they're very important. I'm going to spend a bit of time with this. What is a free body diagram? It's a vector diagram. So this is why we covered vectors. Now that you've got the skills to add, subtract, and manipulate vectors, this becomes a, means a lot more for you. A vector diagram. Show, it's a vector diagram showing all the forces acting on the object. Okay, So all of the forces are being uh, drawn on. Helps us visualize and analyze the situation. And we call it a free body diagram because we take the object's surroundings away. We don't care what the tree looks like in the background. We're just worried about what is acting on this particular object. So what are the steps for drawing a free body diagram? Uh, first thing is to draw compass points. So it, this number one, if direction is not uh, is not easily determined, then you need to draw the compass points on. What we do is we draw a box to represent the object, and we put a dot in the center of the box. And quite in with myself having an engineering background, I just draw the center or the dot itself because I'm more worried about center of mass. And that's what really it's representing. The, the box simply, it simplifies the object to a simple shape. The dot is supposed to represent center of mass. I usually just use the dot. So um, whether this affects you in the future or not, I don't think it'll be a big issue. Um, but I'm just going to put a dot, um, put a dot to represent the object. Let's switch to that dot. 
to represent the object. All right. And from that point, draw the force the force vector to represent each acting on the object. And you want to make sure to label each vector. So, common forces to draw. And I talked about this a little bit uh, more previous. Uh, I want to just talk about how we represent some of these forces. So, if we're talking about force due to gravity, we use our subscripts to help us out. So, FG, so the subscript G represents our gravity. Normal force, I'm going to do a, quite an extensive lesson on normal force, talk about what that is. So for now, it's just known as Fn. Force due to friction, we we'll use a subscript F. And applied force is just Fa. And applied force could be you pushing on a cart to an engine driving the wheels to whatever we need it to be. So an applied force is kind of a generic term that we use. So some examples. I want to go through a couple of examples here. And I want to draw a free body diagram for the following situations. Okay. Car traveling with a uniform velocity. All right. So what do we have? The car being represented by a dot. All right. If the car is on the planet Earth, it's under the influence of gravity. So it will have a force due to gravity. Now, if I push down with this force due to gravity, and nothing stops that force, that means my car is traveling into the earth. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to have a balanced force because we know the road, if I draw the road in, we know the road is actually supporting the car. And that's where that normal force comes in. And like I said, I'm going to talk about it in greater detail, but the normal force for today's lesson is always equal to force due to gravity. Okay? For today. So for this diagram, I'm going to put in the qualifiers. So FG equals Fn. We're going to talk about, like I said, normal force is a very important topic. For today, though, we're just going to assume it's equal to gravity, and it's always perpendicular to the surface. Okay? So maybe I'll put that up here. Normal force, Fn, is always drawn, always drawn perpendicular to the surface. And the key there is the surface. If there's no surface, then there's no normal force. So let me add an example on here to, to show that. Okay, so a car traveling with a uniform velocity. So in order for a car to travel at a uniform velocity, that means that the applied force that's on this car and the force working against it, and we'll just summarize it as friction, have to be equal. Okay? Applied force is equal to due to force due to friction. Okay? They have to be equal because if you're pushing on something and you are applying more force than what's stopping it, it's going to accelerate. It's going to change its 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 its, or its, uh, its current state of motion. So, um, if something is traveling at a uniform velocity, all vectors are equal. All right. So uniform velocity. This is the situation that occurs. Okay, and we're going to talk about it in much, much more detail. I'm just more worried about the diagrams at this point in time. So that would mean if I have a car that's traveling with non-uniform velocity, again, the force due to gravity and force normal have to be balanced because we're going to assume that the car is not accelerating into the ground. Then we have a lot of problems out there. If it's accelerating, that means that engine vector, the applied force, must be overtaking friction, okay, because you you put your foot down on the accelerator, that engine is overcoming that frictional force or whatever's holding it back, so our applied force is now greater than our friction force. All right, so the free body diagram with the arrows is the most important thing for me right here. Okay, what about uh, a woman sleeping in a hammock? So here's the woman. What is acting on this woman? Well, there's gravity, force due to gravity. And in this case, there is no normal force. Okay? The hammock is not the surface of the earth, it's not a desktop. Okay? It is supporting the woman, but how is it doing it? So, for some people that don't know what a hammock is, 
just a quick sketch. I usually put it between two trees. Put a wire here. Here's the hammock. Wire there. So what's happening is if the woman is sitting or laying in that hammock, gravity is pulling her down. Okay? But the tension from those wires, and usually with tension, we use capital T, common sense, T1, T2. So there's your free body diagram. It's the wires that are supporting the woman. So the ground is not playing a role here. The hammock is not on the ground. It's suspended. So if there's no surface, if it's not in contact with the Earth's surface, there's no normal force. So the tension in those two cables are actually what are uh, supporting the force due to gravity. Okay, we'll talk about that in more detail as we get into the more math part of it. A uh, child sliding on an ice. So if this is the child, now we have a surface. We're on the ice surface. So we have a force due to gravity. And because we're on the surface, we'll have normal force. So Fg is equal to Fn. We're going to say this is really good ice. So the kid, the child took a run at it, and now they're sliding across the ice. Really, really good ice has no friction. So that means that I don't have to draw a frictional force. Okay. Um, it, does, the, does the child have an engine to speed up? No, most children don't wear engines on their backs. So they, that means that there's no applied force. So that's what that would look like. Okay. Um, falling objects, for example, if I was to do another example, a falling object, a, a ball that's being dropped, it has no normal force. It, you may put an uh, air resistance force in, which is fine, but there's no normal force. So that's kind of the major focus as to what I want you to be able to do in terms of uh, one section in the homework is drawing those pictures or drawing the homework. So what is net force? Net force is also known as unbalanced force. Okay, so what is the net force? So your net force is your unbalanced force or the sum of the forces in the x and y direction. And we're going to get into more detail of that a little later on. Directions. So that net force is the resulting force, or it is our resultant. So in terms of vectors, in terms of vectors, it is our resultant. Okay, so bringing that vector terminology in there for you. Okay, so if we have a free body diagram that looks like this, um, if we have, say, Susie pulling in this way, so I'm going to say that's the Susie force, that's the Johnny force, and let's go with this as the Peter force. If I was to add those vectors together, so I'll go head to tail, so there's Susie, there's Johnny, and there's the Peter force, then the unbalanced force would be this right here, head to tail. Okay, so there's our unbalanced force. And that's what we're going to be doing when we get into calculations. We're going to be looking for that unbalanced force. So it gives you a feel for what that is. So the homework, uh, page 145. The handout is extremely important because that gives you a feel of how to draw vector or uh, free body diagrams. And the better you are at drawing free body diagrams, the much better you are going to feel about this particular unit and be able to be far more successful when it comes to doing the calculations. Anyhow, if you have any questions, anything you need clarified, please make sure you talk to me during class.